This is Bill Jones, private first class radio mechanic, and a shiny new radio mechanic at that, fresh from a technical training school. At school, he learned everything they threw at him, but he keeps right on studying his TOs. A good radio mechanic never stops learning, and Jones wants to be a good radio mechanic. He's not familiar yet with the actual installations in combat airplanes, but he's going to be. He's got a good sergeant, one who knows his stuff, so Jones should have no trouble. Besides, he's assigned to service fighter aircraft, which have simple installations, usually the SCR-274 or the 522. Hey, pal, drop these TOs off in the shop, will you? Now let's get out on the line. Here's a P-47, Jones. It could be any type of fighter aircraft, and the radio installation would be pretty much the same. While the sergeant gets set in the cockpit for a routine pre-flight radio inspection, you hang on to the side and keep your eyes open. There are the controls, and no push buttons. This one's the SCR-274. First, it's a good idea to get out Form 1A and look it over. The pilot may have noted some trouble on the last flight. Nope, looks okay, Jones. But before you put Form 1A back in the data case, make sure the instruction book for the radio is there. Okay, all around. When the data case is closed, get your mind on the switches. Flip the battery switch to on, turn the three receivers on by setting each switch to MCW and each output switch to ATEL. Turn the volume controls on the receivers all the way up. Next, connect your headset to the receiver. Use plenty of disconnector cords. It's got to reach all the way back to the radio set in the fuselage. That's what must be checked now. One side Jones while the sergeant climbs out of the cockpit to get at it. With all that cord trailing him, a radio man has got to learn not to be a stumble bum. In the P-47, the radio set is located in the fuselage behind the pilot. In other fighters, it may be in a different spot. But wherever it is, Jones, there are bound to be plenty of Zeus fasteners. Unbutton them all, take off the panel, and there's the set waiting for a visual inspection. Practically inaccessible behind the transmitter is the antenna switching relay. See that all connections and snap slides are in good order. Give the transmitter a couple of good shakes. And do the same with the receiver. This will make a distinctive noise in the headset if there's a loose connection. Make sure all wires and cables are unbroken and all connections tight and properly safety. When you're satisfied with the equipment in this compartment, replace the access door and you're ready to start the antenna inspection. Where there's a 274 set, there's a fixed wire antenna. Check the shock spring for possible corrosion and the insulator for chips or cracks. The wire must be taut and in good shape. Attaboy, Jones, you'll need that work stand to reach all of the antenna, unless you happen to have a skyhook handy. Up on top, there's another insulator to examine. Make sure it's clean, because dirty insulators are bad insulators. Loose connections are no good either. Run your hand along the wire so you can feel nicks too small to see, but which might cause the antenna to break in flight. Is the antenna okay, Jones? Fine. Then climb down and get rid of that stand. Always keep equipment you're not using out of the way. In front of the cockpit, there's the modulator unit, which is inspected next. This means another access door to remove, and that means another batch of Zeus fasteners. That's it, Jones. Give the sergeant a hand. The sooner the fasteners are loose, the sooner the door comes off. And there's the modulator. Shake it up a bit to check the mounting and give it a thorough going over to make sure that all wires and cables are in good condition and that the plugs all seat firmly in their sockets. When the access door is replaced, you've still got to take care of those fasteners.
Back into the cockpit now for the most important part of the job, the operating test. When your headset's on, turn the volume controls on the two high frequency receivers down all the way and the low frequency receiver to normal. Start testing with the low frequency receiver by running through the entire frequency range, tuning in distant stations to check the sensitivity. You'll hear something like this. B-17 now approaching field to land. The field is soft. Beware of construction work in southwest corner. Sounds okay. Now let's pick up stations of known frequency to check dial calibration. Finally, the volume is turned way up and the set is tuned off a station in order to listen to the noise level. You want to listen again, Jones? That's all right. Now for a CW test. Tune in a station again. Switch over to CW and listen some more. Well, the low frequency receiver is okay. Switch back to MCW and repeat the same test on the other two receivers. It doesn't take long if you know what to listen for, and the sergeant certainly does. You can speed things up even more by making visual inspections while listening to the receiver operation. That's it, just what the sergeant is doing. Hey, what is he doing? That's a control box. The sergeant knows it, Jones. He's just trying to spot loose connections. When you bang the controls, bad connections show up as a definite trouble noise. But even if you hear nothing, make sure everything's tight. Safety wires, plugs, lock rings, and cables. And that, Jones, winds up the receivers. Now the transmitters. Switch on and turn the selector to the number one transmitter. Then call the tower. The tower operator will give you a check on frequency, modulation, and signal strength. When he says, R5, S5, on 44, 90. You ought to be satisfied. So switch over to the number two transmitter. Meanwhile, checking the operation of the selector switch. Be sure it stays firmly in position. After that, Repeat the same check on this transmitter. It's a pretty easy test, Jones. Now switch back to the number one transmitter. To test the range filter, tune the low frequency receiver to a radio range station that's broadcasting both voice and code, and operate the filter switch. On range, you should hear only code, like this. On voice, you'll get only voice. Two five, East of Columbus, one two five zero. And on both, you hear code and voice together. Estimating Columbus at one three zero zero. We'll continue on West Lake. Finally, make sure the spring stops hold the switch securely in each position. Uh oh, that's not what you'd call perfect condition. This switch will have to be taken apart, but you can't do that now. So you'll have to remember to fix it later, Joan. The inspection's over except for a few details. Turn off the switches, and remember, if you run down a crew chief's batteries, he's likely to run you down. So don't forget that battery switch. You began with Form 1A, and you end with it. Here's where you record any trouble you may have found, like the filter switch. Don't take a chance in passing an airplane with a radio that isn't perfect. Note all defective equipment in the space provided using the proper symbol, a red diagonal here, to indicate at a glance the seriousness of the defect. After repair, or when the equipment is OK, the form is initialed. That completes the pre-flight radio inspection on this P-47 with its SCR-274 radio. Now, if we want to pull an inspection on the 522, we'll have to find another airplane. Here's another Thunderbolt, and this one has an SCR-522 installation. You can tell by the stub mast antenna just after the cockpit. All right, Jones, you try this one. It's simpler than the SCR-274. Just remember your TOs, your mock-ups at school, and what the sergeant just did. Form 1A is in the usual location, the data case.
Easy now. Don't be nervous, Jones. After looking over Form 1A and returning it to the case, make sure the radio instruction book is in there, too. Turn on the battery switch. See that the lever switch is on remote and press the A button. That turns the set on and automatically tunes it to the A frequency. Get out your headset and the long disconnector cord and hook it up. This time it's your turn to climb out. Remove the access door and inspect the radio set itself. It gets the standard visual check given all radio equipment in any airplane. Test all the cables, plugs, safety wires, and mounting until you're positive nothing can come loose, no matter how tough a beating the airplane has to take. You'll want to listen for trouble, so shake it up a bit. When you're certain everything's okay, replace the access door and more Zeus fasteners. Now up in the nose, Jones, where the dynamotor is located. Under the usual cover. A few good shakes will check the shock absorber mounting. Then see that the wires are in good shape and that the plugs fit tightly in their socket. If everything is firm and secure, replace the cover. Back in the cockpit, you already have the set on and tuned to the A frequency, so push the press to talk button on the throttle and call a station using that frequency to ask for a check. Run the same test for each of the other three frequency channels in use. While you're talking, make the standard visual inspection. All you do is push buttons. That's all there is to it except to turn off the set. When you finish this terrific job, turn the battery switch off and get out Form 1A. Initial it to approve the airplane for service. Put it back in the data case. Disconnect the headset and get out of the cockpit. It's the same old routine on every fighter, whether it has an SCR-274 or 522. To prove it, there's another fighter, the P-38 Lightning. Mounted under the nose is a stub-mast antenna, so you'd expect to find the SCR-522 installed. And the push-button controls say that you're right. The radio set itself is just behind the pilot's armor plate. You get the idea, Jones. Same set in a different location. Now, that looks like a P-51. That fixed wire antenna means it has an SCR-274, the hand-tuning radio. The set is behind the pilot's armor plate, same as in the P-38. Well, Jones, that's all there is to it. You've had your training, and now you're getting your chance to apply it on fighters. They're sweet-looking ships, and fast. It takes a good communication system to keep up with them. That's where you come in, Radio Mechanic Jones. It's up to you to make sure that the voice and ears are perfect on every fighter in the air.